Hi everyone, it's Lewis here from alevelphysicsonline.com. Make sure that if you haven't already done so, subscribe to this channel so you can stay updated with all of the stuff I'm going to be putting out over the next few weeks and the run-up to your exams this summer. Now, I did meet with some of the people at OCR, which is one of the big exam boards, and they gave me this amazing document. Now, I haven't found a link to it on their website, but if you've got one, please post it in the comments below. And this is basically a summary of the 2018 exams, okay? So this is based on everybody doing the physics exams for OCR and the kind of main mistakes that people made. Now, if you're not doing OCR, you still should watch this video because, you know, people are pretty similar, exam boards are quite similar, and if people are making mistakes for OCR, they're going to be making the same kind of mistakes for AQA, Edexcel, WJC, whatever it might be, okay? So if you don't pay attention to this, you could easily be throwing away easy marks, okay? Because a lot of the stuff they're talking about is really straightforward, simple advice. So this video is really about some of the main ways that you can avoid making simple mistakes, get those extra couple of marks on every single question, and that might then just push your grade up that little bit more. Okay, so let's begin. Now, a lot of this stuff is going to be really straightforward, and you'll be thinking, well, I already do that. If you do that, that's brilliant. This is just confirmation that you're doing the right thing. So uh, this comes up all the time in lots of uh, past paper examiner's reports. Always make sure that you only round your answer at the very end of a question, okay? Don't round your answer midway through. So for example, you might have question 1A part 1. Now your answer here, it might be um, maybe 0 0.3456, whatever that might be. Now it might only be appropriate to give your final answer as 0 0.346, because you've only got three significant figures in the, the data in your question. But you might need to use this question when it comes to part two for that question, or maybe later on when it comes to maybe part B. If you use this answer here in any subsequent calculations, these answers aren't going to be correct and you're risking losing marks. So although that might be what you write down as your final answer, you should still store it in your calculator, store it in the memory, or write down the full calculator display at some point in your working out. So you never round down too early. You only round down or round up to the appropriate number of significant figures at the end of the question. Something we see a lot of are show questions where you've got to show something is about something else. Now in these ones here, you need to have a convincing proof, okay? Now a lot of the time you might be just using uh, maybe some calculations, some uh, numbers you're putting into that, but text can really be helpful. So you might say that this is equal to this and therefore, okay? There's nothing wrong with having a couple of words by the side of this to show where that equation came from, to show which numbers you're putting into it. And then when you give your final answer, make sure that you um, actually just show, say that, you know, actually put that statement that this shows that this is equal to this. Does that help? So just make your show me questions a little bit clearer. Now, this one here is a tip which I think is super important. Okay, not enough people know this. Too many people just write too much information in a big block of text, often not even using paragraphs properly. Use bullet points as much as you can. Okay, this allows you to structure your answers. You've got like your, your kind of maybe a, a method, for example, for an experiment. You clearly state what you're going to be doing, the equipment you're using, the measurements you're making, how you make your measurements as accurate as possible, and so on. Okay, a clear list of bullet points is so much better than just a massive amount of text. It allows you to maybe structure your answer better, and it allows people actually marking your work to see very clearly your thought process. Now the other thing is when you do write down an answer, just have, just take a, a you know, few seconds to think, is that appropriate? A speed of 7.29 times, 7.26 times 10 to the 9 meters per second. That can't be right, that's quicker than the speed of light, okay? So this one here must be wrong, okay? So don't just write down whatever the calculator produces. Often, it's not that you've got your physics wrong, you've just maybe maybe put something wrong into your calculator display, you forgot uh, maybe something raised to a negative power rather than a positive power. Often it's just something where you've got the right kind of answer, but it's out by a factor of 10 or 100 or 1,000, okay? So this is when you just need to go back, check you've put the right data into your calculator when it came to your final answer. Now, the other thing is that a lot of people think the more you write, the more chance you've got to get marks. I've seen this as a teacher so many times where people start out really well and then it just descends into waffle and then they contradict themselves. So they might have gained a mark at the start of the question, they've then contradicted themselves and they've lost the mark they've already earned. Okay, so um, longer answers don't always lead to more marks. I would say that 
the the mark the papers I've often marked the people who get more marks tend to write shorter answers because they know their physics they go in they're concise they're straight to the point and that means they're not just writing rubbish okay um, this one here again straightforward tip but underline key instructions when reading the question and make sure that as you as you kind of go through your answer you refer back to the things that you've underlined okay that you're not going to lose any marks for annotating stuff for circling the key information for underlining it maybe even using a highlighter that doesn't matter because that's not what you're being assessed on but if that allows you to then write down a really good answer that you then get full marks for then that's obviously an absolutely great thing and in terms of also keeping your answers nice and clear um, trying to correct an answer by writing over it can make it unclear so often, again, this is where people often argue the case, saying, well, I did try and put that, and they'll sort of say they, they, they did change it, but they changed it back again, okay? If you're not clear about what that is, you get nothing, okay? So don't scribble stuff out, because, again, that starts to look messy. If you've written down the wrong answer and you want to change it, rather than trying to change the digit, cross it out and to the side write down the correct answer. Pretty straightforward stuff, but you'll be surprised at how many people don't do this. And if you don't have any more space, because there's nothing left uh, on the page, then put a note saying, see additional answer page. You can use these. Sometimes you make mistakes. You have to cross it all out, start again. That's fine, you know. And you will get, you know, credit for anything you do on the answer pages, but make it clear to the person marking your work. They're going to be marking hundreds and hundreds of similar things. They're not going to give you the benefit of the doubt by trying to find the right thing. So if you can help them by saying, see additional answer page, then you've got more chance of scoring the marks that you deserve. And if you've got any multiple choice questions, which a lot of exam papers do, it often says on the front of the exam booklet what you should do if you make a mistake. Um, but again, if you just cross it out for OCR and put the right answer by the side, that is good enough. I'm sure that your teachers might have mentioned this like a hundred times, but just show you're working out for your calculations, okay? Straightforward stuff. You should be in the habit of doing this, okay? Yeah, you might think it's an easy question. You'll just, you know, absolutely boss it in the exam. But you've just got to write down the equation, put in your numbers, and if you do make a mistake, then you get error carried forward. It might be a five mark question, and you might make a mistake at the very beginning. Now, if you don't show you're working out, you're going to get no marks. If, however, you um, make a mistake at the beginning, you might only lose one mark. And it might be that just something like this is just out by, say, a factor of a 10 or 100 or 1,000, okay? So they'd see your mistake, they'd clearly see your, how logically you're working through the question, and you'd only lose a small amount of marks because you're still getting that physics right. Okay? If you don't put your working out, you just give a bold answer at the end with nothing there. If you made a mistake at the start, you get nothing and it's not worth risking it. And also, come on people, you're year 12, you're year 13. Draw circles properly, okay? You've probably got a compass somewhere in your pencil case. If not, get one now, put it in your pencil case. And if you're going to be drawing a question maybe where you've got a circular orbit or something like that, just use this, okay? Even if it's in pencil, you can probably then just leave it in pencil or draw it around in black again, okay? But, you know, draw diagrams as accurately as you possibly can. Do I really need to be telling you that? You're like, you know this, don't you? Okay, this is for the other people who probably should be watching this video. Um, okay, come when it comes to graphs, okay? Easy stuff, actually. Drawing graphs is easy, okay? Quite time-consuming, but there are certain mistakes that people make. First of all, when it comes to drawing a line of best fit, make sure it goes up down to the lowest point and up to the last point, okay? It doesn't always have to extend to the origin, but you should at the very least make sure that line best fit goes through the points, okay? This sounds like a GCSE bit of advice, but it's A-level, okay? Also, when you do your line of best fit, have the same amount of points above the line as below the line. Pretty straightforward, you should know that. And also, uh, this has happened so many times where I've seen people who just read the wrong thing off, okay? Make sure that um, whatever you're reading off, you kind of make sure you take a bit of time just checking it's the right thing and checking if there's any units, okay? For, so it might be, for example, a time measured in milliseconds or a force in kilonewtons, okay? Sometimes you've got a prefix on the axes, okay? And make sure you take that into account when you're reading data off the line to maybe put into another calculation. And this one here, you probably know this, but if you're going to work out the gradient, this one here, effectively, they've drawn a really small triangle, okay? That's not big enough. Draw a triangle that goes up to, and use a ruler, not like my pen, get, that goes up to the line, okay, and then make sure that this triangle is as big as possible. That means that you're going to have a much better um, value of less errors in your result. 
Okay, and I guess the last bit, which is kind of generic for all exams, is make sure that you give your final answer to the least amount of significant figures that's given to you in the question. So if you have something with mass and time, although that's given to three significant figures, you should only you could only justifiably give your final answer to two significant figures. And that's why things like standard form are really important. So the next thing they talked about was don't be too reliant on the data book. Okay, yes, it's got huge amounts of equations. And the thing is, if you've been working hard and you're revising well, you shouldn't need to use the data book. It's more there just to confirm that you've got the right equation, okay? If you don't know the equations by now, by the time you get into the exam, that means you probably don't understand the physics that well. So make sure that you try and remember as many of these as possible, and actually you understand what all the, sim all the symbols mean, okay? So if you don't know what any of the symbols mean here, that means you need to spend a bit more time revising. Now, sometimes as well, you might get a weird kind of Thing given to you in a question, okay? You might not know what any of this means, doesn't matter, because it will explain it somewhere in the question. And if you get an unfamiliar equation, then maybe you should refer to it in your answer. So what happens as k increases to the value of um, sigma over here? Well, if you refer to the equation saying that as k gets bigger, e to the minus that thing there gets smaller, uh, and therefore that's going to then affect things in a certain way. So if it's an unfamiliar equation given to you, refer back to it in your answers. Now, um, ln and log. Okay, LG, LOG, and LOG to the base 10. In physics, this is all log to the base 10. The alternative uh, might be if you're looking at exponentials where you have LN, uh, sometimes called ln. Uh, I think I always used to just call this log or natural log. Okay, so you've got this or you've got log to the base 10. Okay, this one here doesn't come up that often, but occasionally it might sneak in. Okay, I guess people must be making this mistake quite a lot about if you're calculating percentages, okay, maybe it's about efficiency. Just confirm you've actually multiplied your final answer by 100. Otherwise, the answer you get, it's not a percentage, it's then just a value between 0 and 1. Now, the other thing is about uncertainty. Okay, this is a difficult, kind of tricky area. But basically, if you've got the absolute uncertainty in a value, maybe you're measuring the mass of something using a mass balance. Um, it says here for OCR in particular, that for absolute uncertainty, it should be quoted to one significant figure. Okay, that's something which I didn't know actually, but I think it's useful to remember. So if you're looking at the uncertainty in the measuring instrument, it should be given to one significant figure for the, and this is what the advice at OCR have. Now, a bit of physics. What physics mistakes have they made previously? Now, some of this might not be asked about this year, because just because they asked about it last year, they're not necessarily going to ask the same question again, but you should still be aware of it, because sometimes they are similar content in year after year. So, Hertzsprung-Russell diagram showing the different uh, life cycles of stars. And this video is applicable to both OCRA and OCRB. So some of this might only be for OCRA, not necessarily OCRB. Okay. First of all, when you've got this thing here, the hot stars are to the left. That's why they give out blue light rather than sort of the orangey red light. So the temperature goes to the left. So it's hot here and it gets colder. A bit weird. I don't know why they did that. I guess they probably could have done the whole thing like this, but they didn't. They, they got it like this. That's the way it is. Accept it. Get on with it. This one here is quite specific, but again, they've mentioned it, so it's worth looking at. And it's talking about uh, the change in flux linkage. Okay, it's not about how much that... Uh, changes is how quickly it changes okay that's really important so you've got to refer to the rate of change of flux linkage okay and that then links to things like the induced emf okay something else uh, which came up was about the universe okay and it's talking about the difference between homogeneous and isotropic now something which is homogeneous is the same in all locations okay so if we think about the density of the universe it has the same kind of density, perhaps. Okay, isotropic means that something is the same in all directions. So the word iso means same. Okay, and how can you have something which is the same in all directions? Well, if you had something like this, okay, where you were in the middle, okay, so this is us in the middle, and we might have rings of, of stuff like this. Okay, if you look this way, you see it's not dense, then it's dense, and it's not dense, and it's dense. So this way, you go like low, high, low, high density. This way you go low, high, low, high density. This is isotropic because whichever direction you look in, you would see the same pattern of density. It is not homogeneous. 
Instead, our universe is homogeneous and isotropic. So wherever we are, we look in any direction and we see the same sort of average density of the universe in all directions. Hope that makes sense. The next thing it said was that last year, a lot of people were not describing fission clearly enough, okay? So maybe thinking about the equation that might be given to you, but also describing how the nucleus absorbs a neutron, it then splits into two roughly equal sized parts and gives out two to three further high speed neutrons, okay? Be very clear about the language you're using for fission. Also, just be very clear about drawing your symbols for different particles really clearly. So your protons, your electrons, your neutrinos, your muons, okay? And also make sure if they are either a normal kind of particle or some antimatter, where you've got either a bar over the top or a plus sign if you've got these um, positrons and pos positive muons, okay? Um, the next one. Pretty straightforward, but sometimes if you've got an AC power supply, which comes up a bit more in uh, year 12 and year 13, probably more in year 13, is that's how you draw it, okay? It's just a circle with like a, a little wave and just maybe just mention it's an AC power supply. Make sure you're not just using a cell or a battery. And also, um, you label that as an AC one, but what you're then maybe doing is using an oscilloscope. So that's our symbol for an oscilloscope here. Um, and that basically then allows you to look at the potential difference in that part of the circuit. And finally, if you're doing OCRB, uh, to do with lenses when it comes to looking at magnification or, or things like that, um, effectively what we say is that positive, uh, the positive direction is to the right and upwards, and negative is to the left and down. And that's just like you get our sort of Cartesian coordinates, so you've got positive, positive, negative, negative. Okay, use those numbers when it comes to measuring things like U and V and image size. So that is um, basically, hopefully you've been watching the whole video. Hopefully there's been something there. Now, a lot of that you'll be doing all the time. Go, yeah, that's easy. I don't need to know that. But there's probably little things there you thought, well, I didn't know that. I mean, there's stuff there I didn't know about. I think about uncertainty and giving it to one significant figure. So that is advice if you're doing OCR or any of the A-level physics exams this year. Um, remember that you can find hundreds more videos to help and support you at alevelphysicsonline.com. Hopefully you've been there already. Hopefully this video has been useful and I will be putting up lots more stuff in the next few weeks in the run-up to your exams. I really hope it goes well. If you've got any good advice, put it in the comments below. And yeah, uh, see you soon for some more videos. Thank you.